Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I'm going to explain FPGA versus emulation, but keep it at a high level. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the big difference here between an FPGA device like the Mr. and a maybe a normal emulation device like a cell phone or a Raspberry Pi comes down to something very simple. Hardware versus software. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and FPGA chips can be found in the DE10 Nano, which powers the Mister, and also pretty much every single one of Analog's products, including the Pocket. The main magic behind the Field Programmable Gate Array at a really high level here is they can be configured to copy or mimic or simulate or dare I say emulate a different CPU altogether. You end up with a one-for-one -one replication. So in a retro gaming perspective here, basically the FPGA chip can be used to mimic the SNES chip or an NES chip. If you were to put the two chips side by side and have them process information, they would process them the exact same. You have the potential for perfect emulation. Now moving on to the emulators you'd use on a PC or a Raspberry Pi or a cell phone or a bunch of different devices. This is known as software emulation. And basically, they're programs that are designed to mimic how an original hardware actually worked without using that original hardware. Now, moving on here to what's more accurate, hardware versus software emulation, FPGA versus your standard emulators. And this results in a pretty heated debate in the retro gaming community. We'll take a look at things again at a high level, and we'll use Mewtwo here as an example. So we've got the original hardware. FPGA aims to replicate that one for one. You end up with a clone. And with emulation here, it's basically a ditto. It's something pretending to be the original. Now, taking a look at this specific example, and apologies if you don't know Pokemon, but a lot of people would say, you know what? FPGA looks better than emulation. We have a one-for-one -one copy here as opposed to a pretender. And this might be true, but it also might not be true because we have to take in programming into consideration. FPGA cores have to be programmed. If they're not optimized, if they're not well programmed here, they might not be as strong as emulation. If we take a look at the original hardware, assign a level to it, let's say it's level 100, and then a well-optimized emulator will also say is level 100, and a poorly coded FPGA chip, which is level 20 here. Obviously, the level 100 ditto would be way stronger than the level 20 Mewtwo. FPGA also has its current limitations. As far as I know right now, something like the Mister using a DE10 Nano can't emulate something like the PS2, PS3, or even the Nintendo Switch. And this is where the performance of emulators really comes in handy. In addition to all of that, software emulation keeps getting better and better as technology improves, especially for older systems. Software emulators can use the raw processing power from these better CPUs to really power through any difference between original hardware and emulation. In fact, with a really well-coded emulator and a powerful enough system, you probably wouldn't really be able to tell the difference from a software emulator and FPGA. At the end of the day here, I covered this at an extremely high level. I could spend maybe 20 or 30 minutes going over the subject in detail, but I figured this was enough information to really get you started on the differences between FPGA and software emulation. Anyways, that is all I've got for this one. Hopefully it was short, sweet, and to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on FPGA versus software emulation in the comments below. Which one do you think is better? Which one do you prefer? If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.